I have had very few repeat customers on the playbook, but I had to, at the Masters, talk to a good friend and an incredible leader, David Abley, CEO and president of TaylorMade Golf. Welcome to the playbook. Welcome back to the playbook. Yeah, it's an honor to be back, David. Thanks for having me. We only do it at great places, right? At Augusta National on our tour truck. And, yeah. And uh, why not? So uh, I'm thrilled to be back. And it transcends time because I think when we first saw each other, you walked into the double decker, the first double decker trailer I've ever been in. It was, yeah. I thought, oh, we were here last year when they invented this thing, but it was three years ago. But in that three years, a lot has changed. And I'm going to start with just the culture of golf and how it impacts TaylorMade, because golf was on the downswing uh, when we met three years ago. You know, a lot of people were disenchanted. They were trying to figure out all these, you know, top golf, six hole golf, you know, being on the marketing side of stuff, I've been pitched every type of golf there was. And yet this pandemic of ours, I think shifted the culture, the momentum and the energy of golf. How have you seen it from the inside, someone who deals with it every day? Yeah, it's a great question, and it's it's one that we research and analyze and have been looking at really for the better part of the last couple of years since the onset of COVID. And just to kind of level set, I think it's important to start with the reality of where we were pre-COVID, and then we can migrate through what we've seen happen over the past couple of years, but more importantly, how we think about the future. Um, contrary to what the media was reporting, golf was actually in a pretty good state pre-COVID. We were growing in, in the low mid single digits. Wow. Um, and if you run your business effectively, you can find material growth within your respective business, your categories, whatever sector you're, you're engaging in. Uh, out here on tour, we had great personalities come into play, young players that can really hit it and perform well. Uh, both the men's and women's game was developing and evolving, and there was a lot of entrepreneurial actions happening to perpetuate the growth of the game. So. I would say pre-COVID, we were actually in a steady state with moderate growth. Uh, and so just as a as a jumping Level off set, point, yeah. yeah, just as a jumping off point, as we migrated into the pandemic, and, and I, I'm sure other leaders would say the same thing, the last thing you ever want is a pandemic to be a catalyst to anybody's success, but you do try to find a silver lining in some of the things that did come out of some of the challenges that we all faced. And, and to uh, that too, like I've had the same personal experience with my brand, the podcast, yeah. TV shows and books. I bet. Right. Did you feel as if almost apologetic for your success or did you lean into it? Because I tried to lean into it and say, look, use me as a guidepost that we should be seeing where the light, the yeah. love and the opportunity and lessons are not looking for what's missing, what we don't have. Well, our, our first reaction at TaylorMade was to give back. And so we launched the first live for television sporting event called TaylorMade Driving Relief at Seminole Golf Club in May of 2019 to try to help um, raise money for the COVID relief funds. We did the American Nurses Foundation, the COVID relief funds. We raised almost $8 million wow. to generate um, you know, revenue to support the needs of those that were, were, were stricken by the disease and those that were fighting on the front lines of this. So we're an organization that takes action when we see things. We don't lay back and let them happen. We try to you know, do what we can to help move the future. Um, so, yeah, what we did see through the pandemic was the opportunity through social distancing and outdoor activity and, um, and, and everything that we have all experienced as communities and specifically the community of golf uh, rally behind the game. Uh, it was an accessible sport. And we saw almost a million new golfers come into the sport over the past uh, really 24 months here in the United States and almost six million, David, around the world. Wow on a base of 60 million. So we go from 60 to 60 million globally, which provides us tremendous opportunity to engage and do things that perhaps we weren't thinking about before. So the thinking changed in our organization as we started to see participation growth and importantly, participant growth. And those are two different things. Participation is you and I play golf. Right. How much more are we gonna play because we may have more time, we may be working from home. We have accessibility to golf because everything was closed for a period of time. And then total participants, which is new entrants coming to the game or those that had left the game for whatever reason coming back. So those two populaces came together and we saw tremendous growth over the past couple of years and have built a new baseline in the game, which enables us really to innovate both commercially and operationally. Certainly we can talk about products if you'd like to, yeah. but certainly exercise you know, one of the greatest strengths of our company, which is the entrepreneurship of what we do. We think differently, we advance things. If you remember three years ago, I talked about entrepreneurship and the concept in the context of our corporate culture. Right. not in the form of a product. And that's really what enabled TaylorMade to extend our leadership over the past couple of years to, to sit here today back on the truck and, and be thrilled with where golf is and importantly where our business is. And you have 
the leading players, the leading technology, and that technology keeps growing. I always tell the story, people ask me, Dave, how did you get to run Lee Steimer, right? Most notable sports agency and every frustrated, you know, average athlete that's Jewish like myself would dream of being a sports agent when you realize you're not going to be some sort of professional athlete. And yet, I always say because of technology, Lee had the vision that technology would intertwine itself into every sport. Yeah. Not, you know, every sport relies on technology as much as TaylorMade, but TaylorMade's always been, I grew up in San Diego, in the forefront of innovation. And you can see that with just this trailer, but with the evolution of drivers, for example. And now, you know, the obvious one is the stealth carbon wood. Yeah. You know, and you're looking at someone that played the burners and thought that would, nobody would ever, that came from aliens. Yeah. I remember telling my dad, I'm like, I think this driver came from alien technology. Like Dr. Jacobs has some, you know, CDMA and the burner because I could hit the ball so much farther and I'm not a good golfer. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, to that end, the stealth uh, carbon wood driver is to the next level. What are some of the attributes in that innovation and how did you get there to pick the technology and the material yeah. necessary to have such an extraordinary driver? Well, I appreciate David, you playing our products, you know, for 25 years, <laughs> which is great. And you know, one of the things that we thrive That's on- That's the only way my game gets better. Yeah, way. well, I, I don't I know about that. I, 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 don't, I play the same on every year, but when you come up with better technology, whoop, I drop the stroke at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the stealth story has been a journey. This is not a one or a two year or a three year thing. We started working on advanced composite face technology 20 years ago, 20 years ago. But whether it's through your you know, discussions with Lee about how technology will play a role in sport moving forward, um, the, the concept was a sound concept 20 years ago, but we didn't know how to build it. And we didn't know enough about thermally compressed carbon or carbon fiber to be able to deal with 30,000 Gs of force at impact so it wouldn't break or shatter or, or actually perform better. So for 20 years, we've been working on advancing this technology. We've had some starts and stops along the way, like any entrepreneurial company does. Um, and the innovation cycle for this has not been linear. We literally shut the project down about eight years ago because we, we figured out how we could do it. We couldn't do it in a cost-effective way to enable golfers of all skill levels in every area around the world to actually buy into this technology unless you wanted to buy a $10,000 driver. <laughs> and I'd love to sell $10,000 drivers, but we need, to serve 60, we need to serve 60 million golfers and make sure that what we put in front of them ultimately plays better. So over the past five years, ironically, uh, the story started where our head of R&D and I were in Taiwan at one of our supplier partners. Uh, there was a, an equipment bank that was covered with tarp, and I asked him, what is that? He says, oh, that's the, the old, you know, thermal composite compression face project that we were working on that we shelved. I said, well, do we know more about composites today than we did when we shelved it a decade ago? He says, well, we know a lot more because we've built it into crowns. We've built it into soles. We know how it interacts in, in, in high, uh, high density collisions. We know how this works now. I said, great, well, let's take the tarps off and start. And so it was that moment in time back in 2015 where we said we're going to recommit to this technology. And over the course of the last seven years, we have built out the most advanced face dynamic in the history of golf. So if you and I get together three years from now, if there are still titanium face drivers in the market, I would be shocked, number one. And number two, you'll be lacked because we got to a point with titanium where the benefits were no longer material. You couldn't make it go further. You couldn't increase the inertia values, which is forgiveness. You couldn't optimize launch conditions to at a pace and rate that would be consistent with our desire to advance performance. And that's where 60 plies of carbon came in in stealth. And you can see it in the red face. And whether it's Tiger Woods playing it or Dustin Johnson, Colin Morikawa, world number one, Scotty Scheffler. Uh, we just signed the number one uh, junior amateur in the world, Keita Nakajima, last, ni last night. Wow. That is coming into stealth right now. He's coming out of Japan. So it's incredibly exciting, but it has been a journey and any great idea takes time and you need to put the work and effort into it. We need to thoroughly test every notion around this technology to make sure that when Tiger says I'm playing Augusta, which is what he said when we're thrilled about, we'll announce that socially uh, today here at Augusta, uh, that, that ultimately it's got to work for the best players in the world, which means it can then work for everybody else that plays this great game. Uh, both men and women and juniors, and that's what stealth is. It's the, you know, and, and the last thing I will say on this, and I'm, as you can tell, I, I speak with a bit of passion and Beautiful. love in this technology. Yeah. Our company was founded in 1979 on the notion of a metal wood. That very, very same company, the most innovative company in golf, and we're proud of that, 42 years later, retires the metal wood and launches the carbon wood era. So as you move forward, every inline 
uh, product from TaylorMade, driver product from TaylorMade will now feature a carpet face. Just made me feel very old. Both because of us. Because I was there in yeah. San Diego in 79 as well. And those metal drivers were incredible. And now this carbon. Now, you mentioned, you know, the word forgiveness. And it's funny because uh, that word means a lot culturally, but also with technology and golf, especially. Mm -hmm. The reason I love golf is because, you know, in business, people say, well, you know, wh where do you see things? I would say, because I'm playing chess, mm -hmm. you know, and most people in business play checkers. Yeah. And I think Taylor made plays chess when it comes to 20 year old innovation shelved and then reignited with the aspect seven years later to completely transform golf. Um, but there's other things that I would never have imagined in 1979 when I was picking up my you know first metal driver thinking I was at the cutting edge yeah. of golf. And that's apps. Yeah. Right. Like the capability of what today is either handheld or wearable technology. Uh, and now it's wearable in a usable technology and you're integrating real professional uh, usage, you know, whether it's lessons or actually taking DJ's putter. You, you know, there's a variety of it. I know I saw DJ's putter behind you. Yeah. You know, you have this. I hope, he, I hope he has one in his bag for Augusta <laughs> yeah. here. Probably $10,000 yeah. worth yeah. of technology. Uh, but more importantly, you know, how have you been able to adapt one of the most, because baseball has it, for example, they just recently now have the signal technology. Have you seen that? Yeah. And it reminded me of TaylorMade, right? Yeah. Like, I'm like, TaylorMade would have done this 10 years ago for golf, and baseball is just picking up, you know, yeah. the fact that they don't have digital strikes and balls still drives me nuts. But for you, that app, what are some of the capabilities that exist in that app today that, you know, years and years ago, you and I, when we were more traditional in the business sense with this vision, couldn't even imagine. What are some of those capabilities? Yeah, well, I mean, we have a series of apps that you can find uh, that that are really owned and operated by TaylorMade. The most recent one is a, a subscription model called TaylorMade Plus, Plus. which you know, if, if you want to upload that app, it's incredible. There, there are multiple levels of engagement. You get instruction, you get equipment access, you get new stories, you get behind the scenes of what's going on um, at uh, at wonderful venues like Augusta National or other golf tournaments uh, around the world. So app-based technology enables us to communicate more broadly and more frequently to more consumers than ever before. And that's important for us, right? Our community of golfers that ultimately are the constituency of our company drive the success of our organization. Our customer are those that play the game and ultimately engage with our product. So app-based technology exists in multiple forms. We also have a MyFitting Experience app, which enables golfers to actually get live data in terms of how they play and how they so you don't perform. have to go to the kingdom anymore. You can just do it. Right well, away. I mean, there's, there will <laughs> never in my mind, there will never be a placement, a, a replacement for the physical interaction of human interaction. We learned that over the past couple of years. In fairness, yeah. I mean, we wouldn't be Great able point. to do this two years ago. And I've always believed and our company does as well is that human beings need human interaction. But when you have digital interaction or technology interaction that enables you to either enhance that or experience new things that you wouldn't otherwise remotely why wouldn't you take advantage of that? And that's precisely what we've been doing at TaylorMade. We've had sensor-based technology in our golf equipment for years. Uh, we have a partnership with Arcos right now where you can shot track yourself around the golf course uh, and then upload that to your handheld so that you can look at all the data and synthesize all the analytics of how you play the game for the benefit of playing the game better. You know, I hit my driver right on six. I hit my 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 three wood left Does that on stop seven, everybody right? From cheating? No, it actually provides them, <laughs> provides them greater information to actually improve. And so I think I shared with I, you. I have friends that I literally would trust with my life, but I'm not betting on the golf course with them. Yeah. They, 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 they're, they're yeah. Characters they become in, different animals, exactly, right? Things yeah. change Poker overnight. Too. Poker and golf. But, but we've always said this, Dave, you know our company fairly well. The mission of our company is to be the best performance golf brand in the world. But the purpose, why we exist, is to help all golfers of skill levels, all skill levels, play the game that much better. So when we think about app technology, everything that we're going to design, develop, or implement has to meet that mission and purpose. If it doesn't, we won't do it. So apps play a major role in the things that we do, and they will continue to enable us to create content and, and, uh, and synthesize data and, and, and connect with consumers more deeply so that they can get to know who we are and how we might be able to benefit them in their game. And TaylorMade's always been excellent at the external community and building that community with all the greatest innovations, information, and entertainment. Yeah. Right. And be able to excite people about that. But the thing that stands, you know, to me at the forefront of TaylorMade from all the years that I've been working around and with is the people. And Thank that you. also became very challenging uh, because 
you know, with all the personal issues that were in existence and some were very, very uh, prioritized when you're talking about losing loved ones. And most of us did uh, during COVID, at least someone we knew, let alone someone that we loved. Um, but yet it seemed to me from interacting with your company, even throughout the pandemic, that you were able to, to bond this culture internally, this community internally strengthened and the level from the time I walk into the trailer or walk into the kingdom or to even a shop, the tailor-made people seem to vibrate, I always say at a different frequency, in a kindness, uh, service value. I talk about three things in a successful company and you epitomize this, delivering value, delivering it well, and delivering it to the many. Mm. And when you have such a large company that's international now with varying cultures that can conflict, yeah. how are you able to sustain the culture in such a high level of skills, knowledge, and desire of your people. Yeah, I, one, I appreciate you recognizing that. And, and I can get a touch emotional when I talk about our people because they inspire me and we inspire each other every day. And so to have the opportunity to express this uh, in a forum like this is something that I, I take great pride in. I remember giving a speech virtually when COVID hit in March of 2019. And I remember saying to our organization, and, and none of us, had had the experience going through a global pandemic before and, and a lot of things thank were goodness. about to change, thank goodness, and hopefully we won't again. Um, but I remember saying to our group, the greatest differentiator of this company has been and always will be our people, regardless of what happens. And that our goal, our simple objective, is to navigate through all of the unknown, and there will be a lot of it. It's a fluid environment, things are changing every day, and we will exit this pandemic whenever that is, a better company than when we entered it because of our people. Um, that started in March and there wasn't a week that went by for the next year that I didn't cut a personal video to our people, acknowledging the things that we were doing, how we were learning through utilization of advanced technology or applications, how we were testing products remotely through the use of technology to ensure that we can continue to bring products to market at a moment in time where other companies might say, hey, you know what, let's just tap the brakes and wait this out. That's not tailor-made. That's not our culture. We're entrepreneurial, we're innovative, we move things forward, and we will play a role in this world to help our space and our brand and our customers advance. And so we committed to that as a team, all 1,600 of us around the world, regardless of nationality, regardless of cultural differentiation in different markets around the world. Um, and we worked on that together in a unified way with clearly defined objectives and goals and purpose. And here we are uh, a couple years later, uh, by no means am I suggesting the sadness of this pandemic has ended. I may wake up every day and what's going on in Shanghai today and, and, and how China has shut down a major city and the challenges getting into different parts of Asia. Europe seems to be more advanced now. The US is fine. There's just so many different things that continue to happen, um, but we are back together here. You and I are in front of each other and we'll play on the positives and the advancements that we've made. And, and thankfully, our company is in a much better position today than we were when we entered the pandemic for one primary reason, our people. And this culture is uniquely differentiated. It's, it's special. And we try to share that with everybody through the use of technology, virtually, physically, face to face, um, because we're proud of who we are and what we do. And, um, and we'll never apologize for that. And you shouldn't. And I think it's interesting because I had a conversation with Lee Steinberg when I first started. He said, what's your vision? I said, there's only three things that when you're looking at technology applicable to any industry, which it will be, because I was so early in technology that Justice Scalia asked, actually told me when I had legal research online that nobody will ever do research on the internet, that you need books. Yeah. Uh, the closed mindedness even of our Supreme Court compared to an open minded attitude of content and how important that content is, the access like through TaylorMade Plus the mediums like a carbon wood driver, yeah. the actual hardware, whether it's in the phone industry, in the apparel industry or in golf industry is so important. But you mentioned one thing about cutting checks and what really motivated and inspired me to have one of you, I feel like Saturday Live, one of the few two, two timers uh, on me is that you cut checks when nobody else was. You cut them to $8 million to, to help people outside, even if they weren't customers, right? Or, or even golfers. And then you also, because I am a San Diego person, I know when everyone was afraid and immediately panicked and went to a scarce mode and didn't lean in, you cut checks to your own people yeah. to make sure that they felt secure, that you were there regardless of what the company, because there was no guarantees that people could ever play golf again. Yeah. 
right? We, we have to put ourselves back in that mindset. It took great leaders like you to cut the actual checks as well as have that culture. And I want to point that out publicly uh, beyond TaylorMade as a leader. That's what it takes to be successful. And the people that are coming out better are people like you and companies like yours. Well, thanks. That, that means the world to us. And, you know, the old adage, it takes a village to move a mountain. We've got a group of villagers at our organization that try to move mountains every day. That's what we try to do. And um, I've always been a, an unconditional and firm believer that if you create the right environment for a group of talented people, you can do spectacular things. And ultimately, um, that's what's transpired over the past couple of years. But more so, it's set us up for the future. And we do have a responsibility, not just to each other as employees, and certainly we never stopped committing to each other and we won't ever stop committing to each other, but even more broadly to help others in need and where we can use our brand, use our technology, um, leverage our audience on a global basis. You know, And it's our customers as well that have stepped forward saying, we want to support TaylorMade. Well, we put on the event with the PGA Tour and NBC, in the event, in, in, in the end, it was the public that, that contributed to it. $8 million didn't solely come from TaylorMade or our partners. It came from those that wanted to give, those part of the TaylorMade community or part of the golf community that said, hey, this is something actionable, something that I can play a role in, something that I can help people through. And, uh, and thankfully, it works. So, you know, innovation exists at multiple levels in our organization, every facet and everything we do. That event was just a moment in time for us that we're proud of. And we look forward to not having to do that again, um, but being able to give back in new ways through our technology and through our connection capabilities, through our applications, uh, and importantly, through our people. So uh, I want to thank you. I'm blessed to be here with David Abeles. He's on my mission to empower over a billion people to be happy by making a lot of money to help a lot of people. And most importantly, as fitting in golf, have a lot of fun here at the Masters with an incredible leader. This is David Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.